holidays are upon us, and Lebanon is prepping its festivities after a difficult November filled with uncertainties. The man of the hour is Claude Elchal, the writer and blogger behind My Beirut Chronicles. Claude is unfiltered and blunt, saying it like he means it. His articles and cartoons about politics always spark controversy, yet have garnered him international recognition from media outlets that constantly refer back to him when Lebanon makes headlines. Do you still get shocked after all these years in Lebanon? Yes, yes, yes. What was the last thing that shocked you? Sal uh, Hadir's resignation. Yeah, let's yeah. let's talk a little bit about or that. Or the, the the roads in Beirut, for that matter, the way they've done things, the way you know they dig the streets and they turn them into some battlefield, and they just leave them there and they don't fix it. Okay, so you're shocked every day. Uh, no, not every day. Sometimes <laughs> I'm just <laughs> I stay home, so I don't. You stay home, so well, you don't have to yeah. face it. <laughs> you were very critical, and you tend yes. to be very critical of certain foreign powers meddling in yes, Lebanese affairs. They should not, they should not meddle in our internal affairs. This is not negotiable. I mean, you cannot build a country when you have uh, this or that country that coming in and, you know, impose their rules on you, saying this leader should, should be leader or should not. This guy should be prime minister and which, should not. Which countries do you think impose their rules on Lebanon? Actually, any country that is allowed to will. Uh, Iran, you have Saudi Arabia, you have the United States, you have France, you have, I mean, to a different extent, uh, all of them do, but all of them do. And actually, they do because you allow them to do, we allow them to do. If we don't, we take their opinion, we listen to what they have to say, and then make up our own decisions. This is what a sovereign country means. It's not to go and ask, yes, but this is what America wants, this is what Saudi wants, this is what Iran wants. Who cares what they want? You believe Saudi Arabia detained him and yes. forced him to resign. Yes. yes, I do. And that it is meddling in Lebanese affairs. Yes, I do. And then when Iran, when the foreign ministry of Iran released a statement saying, well, Iran doesn't meddle in Lebanese affairs, which is what <laughs> Saudi was asking for, you also disagree. Of course I disagree. I mean, a few days before the Iranian president said, I mean, nothing can happen in uh, Lebanon, Iraq, Syria, etc., without Iran giving its blessing or something of, of that kind. Uh, and then, not too long ago, uh, the head of the Revolutionary Guard said, like, Hezbollah's weapons are not negotiable. That's not acceptable. Everything is negotiable. The only thing that is not negotiable is for any country to meddle in our own internal affairs. Do you think Lebanon can survive without foreign interference? Lebanon can only survive without in our current state of affairs yes how especially so? how how, how does that work? all our problems come from what let's look at it differently we are a tiny country there are four let's say four and a half million people mm -hmm. Lebanese let's forget for the moment the refugees, refugees etc yeah. four and a half million it's it's a it's a, a part of Cairo not Egypt Cairo and you, and we have a rich country, we have resources, we have water, we have uh, 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 a land that, can, that is fertile, we have everything. And on top of that, there's a humongous amount of money in this country. Some of the, most, some of the richest people in the world live here. You see them in Forbes and whatever magazine. And the Lebanese are not like, you know, uh, your, your, your lazy schmo. They are entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. they are active, they are creative. Uh, so we don't have any real reason to be in the state we are today. The only reason we are in the state we are today is because we have people running this country to a certain extent, not all of them, let's be fair, uh, that are basically agent to foreign countries. This is the problem of this country. But they've been long connected to these agents, foreign agents, or that it's hard and it's difficult to disconnect at this point. And you're saying no, disconnecting really. is, the, is, the, really. is the way to go? Not really. Look at what happened now, the Saad al-Hariri's resignation Tell me. thing. Uh, what people expected usually is for suddenly uh, Lebanese to start fighting among each other, right. Uh, right. the political establishments to start bickering and, you know, what they do usually. And what did we see? We saw a united people. People took it as a matter of pride to saying, no, 
our prime minister is not held abroad. He comes back and then we talk about what he wants to say. And the country is actually running. Mm -hmm. And that's the minimum. That's the minimum. This is what sovereignty means. You know, one of the big things that you like to talk about and the big criticism that you have for this country that people, that you think people don't talk about enough is the poverty line. Yes. And you've written 30% of the population lives under the poverty line. Yes. And yet there's a tiny minority that is making millions and millions and they're the big problem in this country. The mentality is the big problem of the country, not, the, no, not actually the people. You're saying they're, they're the ones driving the country to self-destruct. Yes. Those were your words. For them, you even say, the refugee crisis is a blessing. Of course it's a blessing. It's cheap labor. It's cheap labor with no rights. So what should they do differently? Everything. A little bit more than 1.4 uh, million, million Lebanese people. live under the poverty line, which means they live with under, I don't know, $3 per day. What do you buy with $3 per day? A roll of bread? Can you buy the picon that goes with it? And then you have to, the electricity, and the education, and the health, and, 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 and. There's a gap. It is There's unacceptable. A... Lebanon has never seen something like this in its history. And I'm, talking, I'm only talking about people living under the poverty belt. We're not talking about all the others that are actually poor. The middle class is almost gone. You have now an, uh, uh, an establishment, an oligarchy, uh, uh, living with a humongous amount of money. You see them everywhere, they're not hiding. Weddings that cost several million dollars, cars that cost God knows how much. It's obscene. But if people are wealthy and they want to spend, what, what are you going to do? What can you no, say? My problem is not with people being wealthy. Good for them. Yes. Is when you get your wealth by impoverishing the others where the problem lays. Mm -hmm. When you take advantage of your wealth to uh, 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 take away the rights of uh, your fellow citizen. It's just corruption, is what you're it's, saying. It's, yeah, but it's not only financial corruption, it's the corruption of the mind. It's the corruption of the soul. Here, we have extremely low wages for a very, very high price of living. Who can afford to buy a flat today? The smallest flat in Beirut. Who can do that? Who? But you say the Lebanese are losing the war. You said that specifically. Yes. This is the biggest yes. war that's being waged on there, Lebanon. There is, there is a it's war a, waged a against Lebanese. It's a war, yeah. Yes. And we are losing it. Health. Where are public hospitals? If you don't have money, you go to a hospital, they kick you out, you can die on the street. No one cares. Sometimes the Ministry of Health uh, 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 pays for the services, but most of the time it's not. Uh, education. Education is the worst thing. Where's, where's public education? Where's the state education? It's all private schools, you extremely, ex extremely expensive. You, ha you have, yes, you have uh, uh, the Lebanese University, who's great. Which is great. I mean, have a few public well, schools. But that it's tiny. Imagine <coughs> if we continue like this, you're going to have an entire generation, entire generations, plural, of un uneducated people. You know what this does to a country? You know where it would take it? The solution in Lebanon is extremely easy. What is the Apply solution? Apply the constitution. I love how so many people say it's easy, and yet nobody. Because some people... Nobody wants some people? Uh, no, no, no. Let, no let's, not, let's not be unfair. It's not everybody. I, I'm, not, I'm not into the... Uh, you have this slogan going around by some populists saying, all means all. That doesn't mean anything. You have people in every political party, every single that one of them... That stand and that resist. That, that work for the good of the country and of its people. But it's up uh, to the uh, Lebanese uh, people to resist. Perhaps they're not yet aware, perhaps, that they are one people. I mean, you have something in Lebanon that is called uh, ta'ifi. Sectarianism. Sectarianism. Mm. Which is a massive lie. Sectarianism only exists in the political speech, but in real life it doesn't exist. Mm. Go to restaurants, go to shopping malls, go to anywhere. You have people from 
all sorts of life. We have to coexist now in this space, right? It's just a word for you. Oh, no, it's a concept. Mm. People need to coexist everywhere. You coexist with your neighbors. Yeah. You coexist with the, the when you go to a supermarket, it's coexistence, existing together. Yeah. Not existing yeah. against each other. For you, sectarianism is specifically it's part of the political agenda. It's a political tool. Tool. It's not a reality. If you could give New Year resolutions to specific politicians, I'll give oh. you the name of the politician. You think of a good New Year resolution for them. Okay. 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 Saad Hariri. Resist. Stay on. Resist. We need you. Michel Aoun. Don't change a thing. While talking about uh, 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 foreign uh, interventions, but please take care of the people that uh, put you where you are. Nuhad Mashnu. I guess. Um, yeah, same thing. Keep on the good work. Jibran Basil. Let people choose you. Don't be imposed on them. Let them choose you. And then accept their choice. If they choose you, be up to the task. If they don't, they don't. Marcel Ghanem. Cut the crap. <laughs> Marcel Ghanem. Cut the crap. That's my new One year of, resolution. If not the most uh, prominent journalists we have. Yeah, so he, I think he should, he should equal his job and his position and do it properly. Lebanon. I don't know what to say. Uh, you can't address Lebanon as one person. It's difficult uh, because it's not up to it. Do you want to talk about the Lebanese people? Yes, Should they the have Lebanese a resolution? people. Yes. What would the resolution be? Understand you, the power you have and act upon it. They are the ultimate power in this country. They need to know that. And they need to know there's no difference between them. There's no difference between a Christian and a Muslim, a Sunni and Shia, Orthodox, or Druze, or God knows what. They are the same. And they have the same goals. And if Lebanon flourishes, everybody will flourish. They no, don't understand the power that not they yet, have. Not yet, not yeah. yet. They are everything. They are the Alpha and the Omega. What is your resolution for 2018? Mm. Oh, don't be too nice for you on yourself. I don't know, really. Uh, I don't like resolutions because every time I make a resolution, no, no, I no, break no, no. it. You just gave me resolutions for everybody. You have to give one for yourself. Okay, uh, stop beating around the bush and really start doing some sport. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll be a nice 2018. Uh, happy New Year. Thank happy you. holidays and happy to new you year. Too. To you too. And What's your resolution? And my resolution. It's always along the lines of, you know, get healthier, try to stay optimistic, positive, keep working hard, you know. And the, the you know, the diet stuff usually lasts for about three days. No, no. And then we're done. <laughs> and then we're done. We want to do. We want to wish a happy new year to all the people watching us this year. Yes. We're, we're ending it with happy you. New year. So happy new year. And happy holidays. And thank you so much. And thank you Take for care. receiving me. Yes. We'll see you again next year. Despite comments that are at times brash, Claude feels a great love for this country. A love that makes him get up every morning and work for a better future. After all, isn't a wish for a brighter tomorrow the perfect segue into a new year? I think so.